What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge. Alright, this story is called, Be a Racist and Lie on Your Neighbors? Welcome to Eviction! Population, you. Okay, I'll share another revenge. I'm only vengeful when someone deserves it, and that's usually often, so I'll share one I did from 2011. That's funny. Anyone who's seen my posts know I used to work in the private security field. Not mall cops, but highly trained and skilled and armed security. We worked residential buildings and complexes that were very high-end, like $200,000 cars in the parking garages, high-end. Now, places like this are Karen Central. Imagine apartments full of Karens and entitled teenagers. Now, the company owner was awesome. A cop as his regular job, he understood what we faced. His advice was to be nice, but put the hammer down if you have to, and don't take their crap. Also, that if we don't get two complaints a month about us for worthless crap, that we weren't engaging the residents enough. <laughs> so this is important to the revenge. Each supervisor had 10 to 15 properties under their control. Regular officers patrolled them, but we were in charge of helping with evictions, attending town halls on security issues, deciding on how officer patrols, or updating what areas are being a problem or needing checked. I had 12. Now, in this one apartment complex, we had a couple always calling us. We had an emergency line open from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. When we get there, they cry about their upstairs neighbor. It was a list of things they just changed. Stomping, music, talking, cooking, smells, their dog going number one on the balcony and it tripping onto theirs. Valid complaints if we found evidence, and we never did. When they saw that we were starting to question if they were real, they changed tactics and went racist. The couple above them were a sweet and wonderful middle-aged Asian couple. Husband was an immigrant, but the wife was a born and raised American. These racist Cretans had only talked to the husband, so they assumed, as all racists do, that they were both immigrants. So this white sheet-wearing couple started making comments like, Those Asians, and they are in America, why can't they cook American food? And I'm afraid to be in the parking garage when one of them is driving in it. While it angered me, those comments alone weren't enough for eviction. My officers put exact phrasing in the report. I did ask the property manager about the comments, and she said if they didn't say them to the residents, and the residents didn't complain, there wasn't much she could do. So I tried to think of some way to get them evicted. Not only were they lying to get a couple evicted, but they were calling in false things and wasting the officer's time to respond. And they didn't call just every once in a while. They called sometimes twice in one night, usually five to eight times a week. A month later, the opportunity was handed to me. The Asian couple called me during the day and informed me they were going out of the country, China, for two weeks and no one would be in their apartment. They told me this just in case the other couple started complaining. I knew they were lying and asked to check their doors once a night to make sure it was locked and not broken into. I informed the Asian couple to not tell their neighbor, none of them that they were leaving, and beside myself, only tell the property manager. We had a patrol meeting that night. Officers didn't work one specific region, so I told them all my plan. I wanted them to respond each time they call and write down exactly what they said and happen, and also any racial terms no matter how minor. Mark the report urgent and send it out. We had an online system for all business. Emails, schedules, reports submitting, you get the idea. So away we go. During those 14 days, they complained 18 times. Everything was documented and I took it to the manager. She looked it over and said, let's evict them. Side note, the client gets charged more for emergency response than they do for regular patrols, meaning their lies were costing money. So so there was no HOA because they were rentals. In this situation, myself, the property manager, and the tenant sit down at a table. The charges for eviction are read. If the eviction is security related, then I say what violations have been broken, etc. Not opinions. Just facts based on the reports which the tenants get a copy of. 
Then, the tenants have a right to speak and ask questions. The property manager then decides what happens next. Do they stay or do they go? So, they were sent a formal letter stating that they were facing eviction and had 10 days to set up a meeting. If not, the eviction will be processed. They set one up. I get there and the butthole couple and the manager are already present. The wife immediately digs into me because I was armed. Uniforms for those situations are a dress shirt, slacks, tie, and one weapon in one magazine. Thing, P.S., I don't know. Like elections can be dangerous. I just politely informed her that it was my uniform and not her call to make it. She tried to say she felt uncomfortable and wanted to reschedule, but the manager said, this happens now or I will evict you. So they agreed to continue. Now, for legal reasons, the sessions were recorded by video. That way, the tenant can't lie in eviction court or sue. In front of me were all 18 reports and went over each one, time, date, who called, apartment number is false, and what is true. The only thing they said, the racial terms, weren't true. At the end of each report, I basically said the report is accurate in the fact that the tenants in the apartment XYZ were playing their music too loud, but you are claiming the comments about their race is false? I got a yes answer every time. Time. About the seventh one, I think the wife caught on. She started complaining that I was dragging it out. I just smiled politely and reminded her that this was my time, and she had ample opportunity to object and ask me questions, but only after I was done, and then went through the rest and let them build a defense. Then, after I was done getting them to admit to lies, I informed them that the tenants in said apartment were actually out of the country at the time of those 18 reports and that the tenants provided proof that they were gone and my officers checked the apartment one time a night and confirmed that it was empty. Then I smiled pleasantly and ended my part, but the look on their face was a mix of anger and fear. They didn't have a defense, basically saying myself and the manager were choosing immigrants over Americans. Oh, did I mention the manager was an immigrant? That went over like a hand grenade in a collection plate. Once they said it, she stopped it and told them she was. That made matters worse because they said she was just taking up for her own kind. During this, I'm calm and collected. Inside my mind, I'm thinking, oh, crap. After a few more racial remarks, the manager just stopped them and said guilty, and she would process the eviction paperwork with the courts in the morning. Long story short, they were given 14 days. From what I heard, the judge gave them 30 until they called him a racial name. I was able to call the nice Asian couple and let them know that it was over, and they didn't have to worry because we would no longer respond to calls about their apartment for the next 14 days until eviction came through and the bad tenants left. But they were welcome to call any time if they needed help or had an issue. Security officers want so bad to help, but are limited by either laws, property management rules, or both. So it's nice to do some good. Update! Thanks for the awards, everyone. I debated even posting this and didn't expect it to blow up as it has. Ah, yeah, you see, this is ridiculous. I hate false uh, noise complaints because I am the recipient of many of those. Like, I could just be sleeping, and then the next day, I get in trouble. It's like, oh, you're making too much noise. It's like, bro, I'm just sleeping, man. But all it is is just stupid people finding ways to complain about stupid things, and in reality, they make a lot of noise. But I, but do I complain? Do I bang on the floor like they do? No. I just I deal with it because, honestly, I don't, I don't really care that much. All right, this story's called Incompetent Manager Fires the Wrong Guy. After I came back from Kosovo with the U.S. Army, I got lucky once and landed a really great job. I was contracted to work as a liaison in several parts of the world. Our team would basically go somewhere, figure out what needed done, then make it happen. For example, my first assignment was back to Kosovo, and several towns needed various construction projects. Think like a bridge over a creek, a small community center, a waste treatment plant, etc. We coordinated with the army, 
NATO, the EU, dozens of contractors, and would get jobs done. We would secure funding, then hire contractors, and in some places we were involved in hiring workers as a means of stimulating the local economy. The first team I worked with was amazing. We were able to get so much accomplished and genuinely enjoyed working together. We also had to figure out how to do everything. Our instructions were, one, go to insert place, two, find out what needs done, three, get it done. Somehow, we figured it out. Sometimes it was happy accidents. We made a million dollar deal because we accidentally ran into the guy we needed to contact for funding in a random bar. We had been trying to find him for days. Found him in a bar at lunch. Sometimes we worked long days, as much as 20 hours. Sometimes on weekends. Sometimes we had very little to do. In our off time, we explored the areas, went to bars and restaurants. It was honestly one of the best jobs ever. Anyway, eventually our contracts ran out and I was the only one who signed on for another year. My teammates had families and I was single at the time. When I met the new team, I knew almost instantly that this was going to suck. A team consisted of four people, a manager and three liaisons. The two other liaisons were among the two unhappiest people I've ever met and I could never figure out why. Those guys griped and complained about everything. We all got great pay. Often it was tax exempt. We were generally safe. We usually had fairly comfortable lodging where we rent, but they were never happy. You could shower those guys in the most beautiful escorts in the world, and they would call you cheap because you got them used hookers. One of the places we went, we were easily living in the nicest hotel in the city, with probably the best sweets they offered. But the shower doesn't get hot enough and I have to filter water to drink it. We were on the only floor in the building where the suites had their own showers or running water. Even worse than those two guys was our manager. Whoever taught this guy about leadership should be flogged. He supposedly learned from being an officer in the US Army and also from his business degree at UCLA. But somewhere along the lines, he missed all the lessons about teamwork, management, and literally anything related to managing a team. When we met, I told him that I would be happy to help him start building a relationship with all our contacts and make his transition for the new team as seamless as possible. His response? I'm in charge of this team. We're gonna change some things to start doing it right. Okay. He also decided to lay down the law, again reasserting that he was the boss. Also, the new rules were no consumption or possession of alcohol. No leaving the lodging or workplace in off-duty hours, we worked from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. local time, Monday through Friday. Basically, on our off-duty hours, we stayed in our rooms or within whatever facility we were lodged in. You're not here to be on vacation, you're here to get your jobs done. We were back in southeastern Europe at the time, and I had a lady friend in town. No way in hell am I sitting in my room and twiddling my thumbs. I told him right away that there was no chance that I was going to comply with his commandments. That company policy was clear that as long as there was no imminent safety risk that we were free to do as we wished in our free time. To claim as safety required that he proved that his measures were necessary, I said, this is not the military. You do not own all my time. So yeah, off to a real great start. It was less than two weeks before it came to a head. We had gotten nothing done. Nothing. The manager refused to use the contacts I had acquired over the last year, instead preferring to go through official channels. So I started just doing stuff myself. I made the calls, I got the funding, hired contractors, etc., and went and saw my lady friend after hours. He had this really funny thing he did where he would yell at me for going behind his back, then put his name on my tickets and pass the work off as his own. I got sick of this, along 
along with the crybaby brothers not doing anything. A shouting match ensued. I pointed out his glaring incompetence. He was mad that I didn't follow orders like a soldier. In the end, he got me fired. I tried to fight it, but apparently he was buddies with someone high up in the company. I had the last laugh though. Just before I turned in my laptop and cell phone, I went through and deleted everything. Some of the files that I couldn't get in trouble for keeping, I saved my own computer. But the rest were gone. This was all my contacts, all my notes, how to get money, where to get contractors, private numbers for hundreds of people, in the hands of even a moderately competent person. This was a gold mine of information. All gone. I spent a while just kind of floating around before eventually going home. Apparently, as soon as I was gone, the old manager opened up my laptop and went to go through my files and was enraged that it was all gone. The whole team was eventually disbanded when, after another two months, they were still floundering, unable to accomplish anything. Wow, sounds like someone was an essential worker. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound like a pretty cool job to have. And if you're scared of the lack of consistent conditions, you'd be surprised what you can get used to. Like when you have no other choice and there's no other option available, at least for me personally, you just kind of accept it. You go along with it. Like when I was trying to go to medical school in Pakistan, uh, the hot water there hardly ever worked. And uh, a lot of the time you just had to use whatever towel was lying around. So there'd be times where you had to use a, a wet towel after coming out of a, a slightly cold shower. But it was all good. It was a great time there. That is if you ignore food poisoning and uh, near death. <laughs> that does sound like a really cool job for a young person to have. Just a... Uh, you know, work a lot, and then freaking party, and then work a lot, then party. Great time. All right, this story's called Speeder Gets Paintballed. My family and I live on a street that turns into an elementary school. Whoa, getting ass on this. <laughs> we have five children, and we are always outside playing basketball, riding bikes, etc. There is a teenager that lives down the street that likes to drive extremely fast. On any given day, there are 10 to 15 neighborhood kids playing in front of our house. We have put up signs that say children play, put out orange cones so drivers know we're here, but this kid still drives like a bat out of hell. I've gone down and spoken to his parents and they just told me kids will be kids. I tried appealing to the son, asking, begging him to slow down. He laughed at me. I asked him to go down another street where there are less children. He called me a bimbo. My oldest son borrowed a paint gun from his friend and hid in the bushes of an empty neighboring house across the street and waited for this kid to come home from wherever he goes. Once again, he rolls through the stop sign and speeds up. As soon as he was even with my son, he popped the car with three red paintballs, all three landing on the passenger side back door. He slammed on the brakes, gets out of the car, and starts screaming and cursing about his car. Everyone on our side of the street just stands and looks at him. He asks what we did to his car. Nothing, young man. We were over here. I tell him maybe he should slow down to avoid hitting random things in the road. He hasn't sped past my house again. Edit 1. This went on for almost a year before we did anything about it. We contacted the police numerous times, pleaded with the HOA and the parents. After nothing was done for 11 months, we took action. I'd do it again. Bad ass. Instead, next time, instead of shooting his car with the paintball gun, you, uh, you break his arm. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.